What's up guys? So you've been on this channel for quite some time now, in the year 2023, and you've been questioning as to how can you start your own fish farm. Catfish farming is gaining a lot of popularity in Ghana, and this has resulted in a lot of people trying to find ways and means to start their own farm. And so, in putting your plans together, I am here to give you the details that you would need. First of all, you like to consider the kind of space where you are going to set up your farm. The space will determine the kind of farm that you have to use, and then also the capacity available. And so, what we do in Latman Farms is most of the time, when you say you want to start your fish farm, we visit you wherever the space is and do a feasibility study. In this feasibility study, we are going to look at the things that I am going to mention to you in this particular video. And so first of all, you like to consider your pond. Now we have the earthen pond, the concrete pond, the tarpaulin pond, the cages, and then the plastic tank. The type of pond that you will choose will determine whether you need to even fertilize your pond or you need to even use an antifungal before you stock with your fingerling. This is very, very important because there are some ponds that is going to help you as a new farmer. And some of these ponds are like the tarpaulin ponds because it is easy for you to move them and then easy for you to handle, monitor, and take care of your fish. Another thing you like to look out for is your setup. And so it is important that you take enough time to choose the right setup for your production processes. This includes the ponds, the storage facilities, the water, the fingerlings, and any other thing that will help you to be able to run your farm. And so in most of the farms, after our feasibility study, we could give you the go ahead to produce. What you have to do is, we come in, so if it's a tarpaulin tank, that one farm will come in within a space of a day, and then set up an entire farm for you. The next thing we'd like to look out for will be the source and the size of fingerlings or fish you are going to use to start your production. Now, when I say type, we as a business have decided to research a lot into the various types of fish and then also choose a kind that will help you to maximize your profit and then also help you in terms of your economics. So it is important that you choose the right kind of fish and the right size of fingerling. Now because the fingerlings are going to be the seed of your production, if you have the right kind at the right size, it can help you to jumpstart your production processes and then also if you don't choose or you don't have the right ones, what is going to happen is it's going to set you back. Uh, there was a farmer who has been farming a kind of fish that is a catfish for more than seven months. He called me and he told me this from the UK and the farm is in somewhere in the Eastern region. And for seven months, his fish is not yet up to one kg. And so based on that, I identified some of the problems. And then I now told him that you need to clear them up and then start a new production process. Meanwhile, this farmer has spent a lot of money on feeding and amongst other things. And so anything at all that you can do in your business that is going to help you to meet the timeline and then also get the same or the right size of fish is what you look out for at the end of the day. The next thing that I know that a lot of you guys have been asking yourself is, Latman, if I have, let's say, a plot of land or I have half plot, what capacity of fish can I produce? If you have a half plot of land that is 35 by 100, at the end of the day, if you are putting up tarpaulin pond, you can do 6,000 pieces of fish to 8,000 pieces of fish. Here lies the case, there will be enough space for you to move and do all other things. But then if you rather change it to like 50 by 70, then you rather be looking at somewhere between 4,000 to 6,000 pieces of fish. But if at the end of the day, you are using the entire one plot of land, which is 70 by 100, then you can have 8,000 to 16,000 pieces of fish. But if it appears that you are going to be using, let's say 70 by 100 for a mud pond, 
Then at the end of the day, you are looking at a figure between four tons, that's 4,000 to about 6,000 pieces of fish. This is because you are not necessarily going to be changing the water amongst other things. And so when we come to your place and we check your space, we will now look at which of them will be ideal for you to use and then we'll tell you the production capacity and how well you can save on your production processes. By having this much information, you'll be able to maximize the space that you have and then also make the right profit from your land. Another thing we are going to discuss is going to be about feeding. It is important for you to understand that these fish require high protein content feed. And so depending on the kind of system we are going to have in place, we are either going to use only the pelletized feeds that is being sold in the market, or some of them we may employ other supplementary feed processes. We've discussed black soldier fly production, and then also in our trainings, we have mentioned other source of natural feed which you can use as supplementary feed. And so when you are doing your production processes, most of the time, we do the feeding twice in a day, in the morning and then in the evening. So most of the time, feeding is being done between 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. or 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Most of the time, you need to understand that it depends on where you are that will determine what time is best ideal for you to feed your fish. There are areas where it is cooler and for that reason, you may have to shift the time a little bit. And then there are areas where it is not that cool and so it's easy for you to just go away with the 8 a.m. feeding time. Another thing that is important for you to understand is you need to feed your fish the right size of feed at the right time. And then also to be able to feed them at the right quantity. And so with Latman Farms, when we come and we set up Another thing we give you is a feed chart that will tell you the amount of feed you need to give your fish from 5% to 2% per day so that you will not overfeed your fish or underfeed your fish. Because when you overfeed your fish, ammonia is going to increase and then you are going to have problems in your pond. And if you underfeed your fish, it can increase cannibalism and then also, let's say, stretch your production time. And so having these details is going to help you to be able to plan your business in the year 2023. Another thing we would like to look out for is our source water, which is also going to be what kind of water are you going to culture your fish. It is very important for you to note and then factor in the amount of water that you would need per week, per month, and then through the entire production process. And there are possibilities where you need plan A, plan B, and plan C. And so when we come to your farm or we come to your place, we'll take a look at some of these things. And then we'll tell you alternative plans that you need to have in order to forecast for your production so that you don't have water challenges. And aside the water that you are going to use to culture your fish, you'll also be draining water out. That is if you're not running a recirculatory system. And so for this reason, you need to look at your drainage. How are you plumbing your drainage? Is it going to be easy for you to drain the water from your fish as fast as possible? And then also make sure that maybe the drainage is not too drastic or it's not too slow so that the fish will not be stressed because the major cause of death in your fish is going to be stressed. And so you need to note some of these things down. And when we come in, we'll help you through all of the processes, including calculating of the time and all of the things that you need to know for you. Now, if you are running intensive culture, then there may be the need for you to visit environmental protection agency to come and take a look at what you are trying to do. With Atman Farms, we don't want you to just get up and set up a farm and just be like any other person. We want you to go through proper processes so that when you receive a client who says, I want to buy your fish to any parts of the world, it is easy for you to follow through that process. So a lot of farms that we have set up, we give them a full plan that helps them to register their business. We set it up for them. We train them. We give them constant visits and constant supply of information. And then moving on from there, we focus on the next aspect that is marketing. Now your marketing will determine the size of fish you need to produce. Your marketing will determine how you process your fish. And so with Latman Farms, we look at the market bits we have a luxury of information that you can tap from and then based on that, we set up a production line for you, which does not necessarily mean that you are going to process them in your space. 
We have other production centers that you can take advantage of and process your fish over there. But they meet the international standard. And so at the end of the day, when your fish is in the market, you can charge premium prices for it. This is the more reason why in this year, before you try to start any fish farm in your locality, try and reach out to Latman Farm, get an appointment with us, let us come, visit you, look at what you can do at the end of the day, and then get your production processes started. The final thing I'd like to talk about will be about training. Now, when we come and we set up the farm, the next thing to do is to train you or train your farm managers so that you follow the right processes. So there are optimum levels for which you can use to maximize the growth of your fish and then also reduce the risk of having a disease outbreak in your farm. And so when we come, we take you through all of those processes. We give you some sheets and fact forms that you always fill in with the details. So when you feed your fish, when you have mortalities, whatever problem, whatever thing you have, you note those things down. It is as a result of this that Latman Farms is bringing you a maiden training for 2023, which will be on the 31st of March and the 1st of April. All farmers from different parts of the world can join us on a live stream or you can come in person and come and learn. It is going to be a two-day training where we are going to take you through every single aspect of the things I have spoken about. Now, some of you guys, you need to understand that people have spent a lot of money to set up farms, but because they do not have the training, at the end of the day, they lose out on some of the basic things in their farms. So I have visited a lot of the farms in Ghana. I have set up a lot of farms currently, and I have realized that the training is an essential key. And so we'll give you guys details. If you are interested in joining our training, there will be a contact down here where you can just reach out to us and just send us a message. You can send us a WhatsApp. You can send us an email that says, Hi, my name is so, so, and so, and I want to join your training. We'll call you. We'll give you all the details. And then you will arrange where, when and where you can come and join our training program. This training is a training that has transformed a lot of farms and we would entreat you to take advantage of it. Thank you so much for watching us today. We'll see you some other time on Latman Farms. Please make sure that in this year, you like, share, and subscribe our videos so that other people can also learn and join the family. The Latman Farm Farmers Community is also available. And so if you reach out to us, we can add you to the community where you can enjoy a lot of information. There are a lot of updates that we'll be bringing to you. And so just take note. We'll see you next week. Bye.